Now we'll discuss chapter 2 Forest and Wildlife Resources. We share this planet with millions of other living beings, both microorganisms and macroorganisms as well. This is called as the biodiversity of life. We are all part of the Earth's ecological system and forests and wildlife play a key role in it. Now we'll discuss this topic, flora and fauna in India. Flora means plants and fauna means animals. India has a rich biodiversity of flora and fauna. Based on the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources or IUCN, we can classify them as follows. Number one, normal species. Normal species are those species whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival. Such as cattle, sow, pine, rodents, etc. Number two, endangered species. Endangered species are those species which are in the danger of extinction or getting extinct. Such as black buck, crocodile, Indian wild ass, Indian Rhino, Lion Tailed Macaque, Sangai, etc. Number 3. Vulnerable Species Vulnerable species are those species whose population levels have declined and are likely to move into the endangered species category soon, such as Blue Sheep, Asiatic Elephant, Gangetic Dolphin, etc. Number 4. Rare Species Rare species are those species which can either become vulnerable or endangered species soon such as the Himalayan brown bear, wild Asiatic buffalo, desert fox and hornbill etc. Number 5. Endemic species Endemic species are those species which are found only in some particular areas which are usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers such as the Andaman teal, Nicobar pigeon, Andaman wild pig, Mithun in Arunachal Pradesh, etc. Number 6. Extinct species Extinct species are those species which do not exist anymore and are also not found even after many searches such as the Asiatic cheetah, pink head duck, etc. Next topic, the factors that cause the depletion of flora and fauna are as follows. We human beings ourselves have depleted our forests and wildlife for our various purposes. Industrialization, construction of roadways and railways, clearing forests for agriculture, commercial and scientific forestry, mining activities, deforestation, shifting cultivation which is also called as June cultivation which is a type of uh, slash and burn agriculture are some of the major factors which led to the depletion of the flora and fauna in our country India. The Himalayan yew, Taxus valachiana, is a medicinal plant found in Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh, India. A chemical compound called Taxol is extracted from it and is successfully used to treat some cancers. It is now the biggest selling anti-cancer drug in the world. Due to this, the species is under great threat due to over-exploitation, habitat destruction, hunting, poaching, over-exploitation, environmental pollution, poisoning and forest fires are factors which have led to the decline in India's biodiversity. The destruction of forests and wildlife is also strongly correlated to the loss of cultural diversity as well. It is because when forests and wildlife are destroyed, it affects us human beings and our lifestyles as well. Therefore, they are vital to the quality of life and also to the environment. Now, we'll discuss this topic, conservation of forest and wildlife in India. In the 1960s and 1970s, 
conservationists demanded a national wildlife protection program. The Indian Wildlife Protection Act was implemented in 1972 with various provisions for protecting habitats and an All India list of protected species was also published. Subsequently, many national parks and wildlife sanctuaries have been established by the central and many state governments. Also, several projects like Project Tiger, Project Elephant, etc. were launched by the Government of India to protect the endangered species of animals. Project Tiger was launched in 1973. Under the Wildlife Act of 1980 and 1986, several species of insects have also been added to the list of the protected species. In 1991, Plants were also added to the list for the first time, starting with six species. Now, we'll discuss this topic, types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources. In India, forests and wildlife resources are owned and managed by the government through the forest department or other government departments. These forests are classified as follows. Number 1. Reserved Forests More than half of the total forest land has been declared as the reserved forests. As they are regarded as the most valuable forests, mainly in terms of the resources found in them. Number 2. Protected Forests Almost one third of the total forest area is the protected forests, as declared by the forest department. This forest land are protected from any further depletion. Number 3. Unclassed Forests These are other forests and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities. Reserved and protected forests are also called as permanent forest estates. Madhya Pradesh or MP has the largest area under permanent forests about 75% of its total forest area. Now we'll discuss this topic, community and conservation. Forests are home to many traditional communities and they try to safeguard their forests as well. For example, the inhabitants of five villages in the Alwar district of Rajasthan have declared 1,200 hectares of forest as the Bhairo Dev Dakav Sonchuri, declaring their own set of rules and regulations which prevent hunting, thereby protecting the wildlife against intruders. Now we'll discuss this topic, sacred groves, a wealth of diverse and rare species. Indian society comprises of several cultures each with its own set of traditions of conserving nature and its creations. For example, in and around the Bishnoi villages of Rajasthan, herds of black buck or chinkara, nilgai and peacocks are seen as the integral part of the community and no one harms them. The famous Chipko movement in the Himalayas successfully resisted deforestation and also encouraged afforestation or afforestation. Farmers and citizens groups like the Beej Bachao Andolan in Tehri or Tehri and Navdanya have shown that adequate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic chemicals are possible and economically viable. In India, Joint Forest Management or JFM was created in 1988 and is a good example for involving local communities in the management and restoration of degraded forests. The local village institutions undertake the protection activities and in return the community members receive various benefits like non-timber forest producers and a share in the timber harvested. So we all should accept only those economic or developmental activities that are people-centric, 
environment friendly and economically rewarding so in this way we studied this chapter chapter 2 forests and wildlife resources so please visit our website shankarji.com to download the notes and the important questions for this chapter the link for the same is given in the description below and you can also do some google search and add some additional information to the existing knowledge which we have and if you have any doubts or suggestions you can let us know in the comment section below thank you so much have a great day